something that could be brought into the world, something that could be really making an impact and what it feels like to be uber vulnerable in that space of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm legitimately feeling this. And if it were to be taken away from me right now, it would hurt. Yeah. And you know, the process of actually doing this, it hurts too, because it like, I have to go through my own walls of resistance, mm -hmm. my own stories, all of this crud that I've created if within me based on all of these experience in the immature mm -hmm. that are somehow programmed a, 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 a modus operandi, right? Yeah. An operation kind of deal of like production. And it's like, yeah. you know, here it is. You're listening to The Real You. Thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary in all of us. My name is Dooley, and this podcast is in partnership with Pocket Change, the social platform built to show the real you. And then coming in, treating you, which is partway through college, I think was a step of um, clarity around all that. So starting to not just be a wanderer and a dreamer in my mind, but start to kind of put a little bit more tangible um, feelings and things that were coming up in my head into practices, um, whether that be through taking yoga a bit more seriously or even for the first time actually discovering meditation. Um, and those are almost two basic ones. I think coming actually into more of just how I view my own spiritual self in the world and what it means to bring my energy forward into things, how to have self-awareness around my own what's draining me and what sort of light I'm bringing forward. Um, mm -hmm. All those things I think started to become a lot more clear um, and not, not that they became answered. It's more of they became clear that they were something I was and still am in an ongoing discovery. Yeah. yeah. And I, that's fascinating. Right. So the first step is the clarity that it's unclear yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and accepting the muddiness of the journey Mm -hmm. uh, around discovering kind of what our real power feels like, what our, um, what our real impact um, may look like, um, mm -hmm. rec recognizing that it uh, doesn't look or, or no, no two journeys are the same. Yeah. No, no, no two impacts are necessarily the same. Yeah. 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 And, you know, we, 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 we grow up in, in um, a form of academia and socialization where we're kind of, given all these different little benchmarks mm -hmm. and how at, at the point in your journey, you know, um, nearing the end of your undergraduate degree, running a, 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 a startup, small business, taking on a lot of roles that are new, chaotic, mm -hmm. um, exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the whole process of discovering who you are in the context mm -hmm. of all of it um, outside of all of these preconceived notions of how we thought we were supposed to look or thought we were supposed to be, or the roles we thought we were supposed to play. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's amazing to me how the, um, how that, that acceptance, I guess this is what I'm getting at is, is such a critical piece to um, uh, being the real you, right? Yeah. Um, and that's and um and how how baby Dooley, the musician, and 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 Christian Dooley, the business person, and um, you know Christian Dooley, the student, and the the son, and the the the, the partner to now um, the chef. You know, Don't forget the chef. The chef too. Yeah, but how all of these different pieces are are so much a part and can can support the whole of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I've actually kind of come to realize too, I think my, through this kind of self discovery um, and focusing more on it is my biggest anxiety or whatever it is that I think has been holding me back in life is actually the paralysis of the stories we tell ourselves that other people aren't even thinking about. So basically, I guess to clarify on that, um, through talking with you, obviously, for years now and focusing more in on what it is that kind of when I feel like I'm in flow and nailing my thing and discovering difference, whatever it might be. And then when I have the moments of crawling into bed and freezing for weeks on end and all that kind of mm -hmm. other side, mm -hmm. 
both of those things can actually be pretty heavily swayed by a made up story in my head about what other people might have on their mind, which I think is natural and, and, you know, there's the whole social world we live in and wanting the approval of others and stuff. But then there's the whole toxic side to that, which is, am I actually living through my own sort of lives and beliefs and things mm-hmm. I want to be doing, or am I getting attached or even scared of what other people are saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah so there's, yeah. and there's, there's like, there's, there's, there's safety and security. The ego is super safe and secure in these roles. Mm-hmm. So for the, therefore we, you know, in these moments of chaos and discomfort without awareness, we put ourselves into the ego state where we're like, okay, I'll be okay as long as I fit this, this mold. And then that doesn't feel good or feels inadequate or unreal or whatever word mm-hmm. you want to use. And so then we enter into the world and we're, we're, we've, we, we make up these stories about how others are seeing these deficits within us, mm-hmm. um, which, which, which what we are really seeing in the stories we are creating in ourselves are actually not the judgments of them. They're actually our own internal judgments yeah. of, of, of the misrepresentation of who we are and how this, this distinction gets, gets blown up into this whole thing, mm-hmm. which could, could then spiral and take over kind of the identity idea of, of who we are, thus limiting how we make our impact or how we show up in all yeah. of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I've, and we've talked about this plenty of times, but um, especially going into the startup thing and um, my interest with music stuff and, I mean, even growing up playing golf and jumping into the rugby thing, each of these consistencies I found is having interest in stuff that's actually, from a base level, pretty extremely difficult and out there from a risk factor. Like it's really hard to just start a startup and have it be successful and to make it in music. And then even when I think about with golf, it's like each of these things have this underlying excuse on top of them. Like, well, it's a startup. It's not supposed to work. Oh, making it in music, that's impossible. Or I would actually get good at golf. And so I've come into recognizing this sort of trend where I feel actually most comfortable, where a lot of people feel uncomfortable Mm. under the excuse factor. But also now realizing too that like my own my own discomfort is actually owning up to them. So it's not it's mm. not in being in an uncomfortable spot like crazy doing music stuff and sharing my vulnerable thoughts and all those things. Like I've become normalized with those. Mm. But I think what I'm most proud of over this past month is that acceptance factor of wait a sec, I do truly love music and want to be able to create and share stuff and go perform and it's no longer this oh no it's just like a side joke thing it's like, no no i really love doing that and i'm going to focus on it the same mm-hmm. way with the startup it's it's no longer this oh we're in college and it's a startup and we're working hard on it but it might fail it's no i'm actually working what does on it mean it. what does it mean for you to love those things how does that love show up in the context of the navigation of this process of chaos and discomfort I come back to the what's draining of my energy and what's giving of my energy. Mm-hmm. And when I love things, it's giving of my energy. It's sort of how mm-hmm. I would describe it. So mm-hmm. that also comes in, in <laughs> it ebbs and flows. So say with the whole start mm-hmm. of start doing this pocket change thing, it, mm-hmm. I would say like, I love pocket change and I love working on it. That does not mean I want to do it all day, every day. And that does not mean I will want to do any single part of it. It means that Say, for example, in having these kind of conversations or leaning into this um, next step with our direction around how do we bring out a more vulnerable, real self, you know, into the social um, social media realm or sharing realm or whatever it might be. That, to me, is, again, reigniting the feeding of my energy or the love for pocket change, which is what I actually love isn't some brand that I'm associated to. It's the feeling that with communicating with other people, you can bring forward new ideas, inspirations, mm-hmm. talk about the collective pain of mm-hmm. whatever the human experience is, and we're all going through it in different ways. But having mm-hmm. that like true self, um, mm-hmm. I guess I don't even know exactly what your question was, but it's yeah. So I mean, I, I, I just I, what I was appreciating was was the emphasis on the word love 
and the idea that I love this and I love that. And what I was, what I was interested in is whether this was a, a mental construct of like something that you love the idea of something and you love the idea of the impact something's going to make, or is it something that, that, that you physically feel in your heart space? Mm-hmm. And, and I think in, 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 in our world, like, you know, I referenced growing up in education, all these different things is we've been taught real hard to, to think about what we love. Right. Mm-hmm. And we have not been taught how to feel mm-hmm. love, you know how to feel our own heart, how to feel our connection, you so, know, not to mention, not to mention two dudes sitting on a, on a, on a, on a call, two heterosexual dudes sitting on a call talking about love and connection and connecting to what we really feel. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, and you and I've talked about this for the past few years on and off as it relates, like tapping into that space and mm-hmm. the practices that bring you into that space. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and for you, this, this navigation of, of music mm-hmm. and how music activates you and how music yeah. is like, like I've listened to your tracks and stuff, you know, how, I mean, that one experience I had was list felt like I was listening to the inside of your body, like, yeah. <laughs> like moving around and, and yeah. And, 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 and visceral, like do is like, boop, 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 right. And you know, it's, it's, it's crazy, but it was like, that was my experience of you knowing you as well as I do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then experiencing you navigate pocket change and graduation and you're launching and, mm. and how like, all of these things were like in silos and how you're, 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 you're now kind of like bringing them all together and discovering more about what it feels to really love mm-hmm. something that could be commercialized, like something that could be brought into the world, something that could be really making an impact and what it feels like to be uber vulnerable in that space of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm legitimately feeling this. And if it were to be taken away from me right now, it would hurt. And, you know, the process of actually doing this, it hurts too, because it like, I have to go through my own walls of resistance, Mm -hmm. my own stories, all of this crud that I've created within me based on all of these experience in the immature Mm -hmm. that are somehow programmed a a modus operandi, right? An operation (laughs) kind of deal of like, production and it's like yeah you know here it is yeah and, yeah, um, yeah yeah and it just how and, and and how critical it is for us to 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 be in that conversation as clunky and as dysfunctional as it feels to feel love for me it's hockey right and like being on the ice and the smell of the ice and 12 year old greg being out there and feeling all of him under the stars and 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 mm-hmm. the wind and my friends' voices, it's like, man, that's aliveness. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. Like aliveness is like like in the zone or with a couple of your peeps, like like jamming and stuff. And how that that feeling and mm-hmm. that invigoration and that that like vulnerability, mm-hmm. how that can be so present in everywhere we live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether it's with your girlfriend or all these spaces, we can we can stay small mm-hmm. and be safe. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying be stupid and jump off cliffs, but I'm saying like, like navigating that sensation of like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, I'm not, I'm yeah, not, yeah, yeah. I'm not going, I'm not going there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, actually going there and being like, you know what? Let's try this. Let's yeah. craft this. Let's put this out there. So, you know, okay. I, I just think it's everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so that's for this past month too. Um, you know, I had kind of a breather the past month doing some travel and um had some time to just sit and do some music and coming back in, I kinda had this intention of okay, like sort of talking about my fear factor. No, no, own up to the fact that I don't have to silo and pretend about these things. Like I am going after these things or in my own path of discovery. I might not nail it right now, but coming in this past couple of weeks. Even last week, I did a couple different little studio sessions with people who I'd actually have been kind of inspirations of mine or had met along the way. And every time I walk out of those things, it's like, we're just going, connecting, making beats, testing ideas, coming out. 
I feel like I get out of there and I want to like call my mom like, yo, I just had like a great studio session. Like there's that feeling Mm -hmm. now doing some of these calls of just talking to people. I literally have noticed every single time after I do it, I like just get up and like walk a little lap after. Um, And it's kind of funny because I feel like I just had some massive experience or something that was whatever. It was just like an hour conversation about some random shit. And I remember walking out yesterday, um, I did it back in my uh, room and my friend, uh, Graham and Amanda, we talked about all this crazy life stuff and future vision things and spiritual stuff and everything. And I walk out of my room, uh, just finish the thing, my Zoom's exporting and I stand up and just go outside and kind of like, look, my roommate's just sort of sitting on the couch and he just sort of looks at me and I'm like, yo, (laughs) like I almost kind of didn't even know how to, um, like communicate for a sec because I was just yeah. So what what is what is that that that, you know you know what that sounds like to me that sounds like like embodiment yeah that that sounds like like deep connection Mm -hmm. like deep you know deep presence Mm -hmm. almost like you were in a different planet for a period of time yeah yeah yeah, right like you you're in these things that's what it's like like coaching people like you it's the same thing it's just like you drop in and all that's present is you me and the space between us and whatever comes up mm-hmm. and like, and, it, and, 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 and the absolute focus and flow and connection. Right. Yeah. yeah. Imagine if we could live like that all the time. <laughs> scary. <laughs> what's what? Yeah. So what's scary about it? I don't think it's actually scary. It's just, it's one of those things that we were actually talking about this yesterday with. I genuinely believe that the meaning of life is to be present but even when I try and describe what it means to be present, you instantly go to, okay, turn your phone off. But you can be present like with your phone too, right? But then you start to get, okay, beyond the phone stuff. Like when you talk about embodiment or really being in something or in a, more of a meditative thing like with yourself, or with our own stuff. It's, so, it's just so much harder, I think, than it is spoken like to say, oh no, just be present. Or it's like, I just need to go be with myself for a sec. Even then your mind could be racing, but that also could be you being present within yourself. So I guess the scary part of it is I still, while I know what it is when it's sometimes when it's happening, but most of which when it has just recently just happened and I kind of snap back for a sec. um, I guess the scary part is knowing how hard it is and how it's never ending. There's no like enlightenment. There's no, Oh no, you got it now. It's, it's a constant moment to moment moment throughout your entire life battle. And I think, I guess that's the scary part. Uh, So how do you, so how do you support that space for yourself? (laughs) I mean, (laughs) well, no, but I mean, I'll tell you how, you know, how I support myself in that space. It's, it's, it's consistent exercise and connection to my body yeah. it's a certain amount of cardiovascular activity weight training cardiovascular it's meditation mm-hmm. it's um j- journaling mm-hmm. it's um it's time in nature mm-hmm. um time on the ice mm-hmm. um listening to music mm-hmm. um but but what what, I, what i'm what i'm what i'm trying to emphasize here is the, what realization i had was was the importance to building practices that support presence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And presence is kind of an inherent way of showing up if you are, um, for me, if, 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 I'm, if I'm grounded in my practices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as an athlete, I started out by playing hockey all the time. And, and you know, everything was about sports. Mm-hmm. And so now I've shifted and said, okay, how do I, how do I take this notion of practicing, which is deeply ingrained in my body and, and develop the right life practices that allow me to show up for those I love, the things I love, um, and anything I so choose to put my intentions on. Yeah. It's, it's actually interesting. (laughs) I don't know if this just clicked, but the idea that you go and you practice hockey, right? So go and you work on stuff and all that. And it's also in that moment, you're also being present with yourself and on the ice and, you know, with your team. But what you're also doing is 
you're ingraining it into your body and mind and movement and flow that when you're actually in the game time, you're not sitting there thinking about, oh, am I putting enough flex on the curve when I shoot? It's like, you're just in it. And when you actually apply that to essentially the fact that our whole life is this never ending hockey game, it's like all you can kind of do is practice, be comfortable with the presence of messing up and then have your moments of shine, which would be the game time. Yeah. And so at point you're just also present. And if you let go of results, all, all of a sudden you're winning all the time. <laughs> this is everything. This is everything. So you, you, you practice yeah. to show up and be present so you can let go of the stories mm-hmm. and allow yourself to be in the moment and do as you're intended to do. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Versus trying to control it. I've got this great yeah. quote in front of me. Here it is right here, just so you know I'm reading something. But it says, master your instrument, master the music, then forget that bullsh- forget all that bullshit and just play. Okay, read it one more time. Read it one more time. Master your instrument. Mm. master the music mm. and then forget all that bullshit and just play. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the bullshit is, that's like the paralyzing fear that I'm, I'm talking about too, is at this point, I, I know I can do my thing. I, I'm comfortable and confident within my own self. I'm just still stuck with a little bit of bullshit that hangs around me and I let it like grasp me, which is, I think now the practice and even with doing these things is the practice of just, there's nothing I can do about those stories or those pretend thoughts that I might think people are thinking about me, but. Mm -hmm. So, and it's the presence, the, 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 the play in this, like just play is just be present. Yeah. 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 And then that just play, you know, that, that is that, that presence, that is the space within us. That is like, like, remember those moments when you're, you're a young child and you're just, all you did was play and do and, Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't, you didn't have a story. You just had the next thing and you just kind of did. Yeah. Well, what I've concluded or come to is that that is the space we're returning to in deep presence. Mm-hmm. We're actually accessing the, the, the childlike energy, the innocence, the grace, the joy, all of those pieces within the deepest aspects of us that are, are, are our soul, are, yeah. the, are the parts of us that are unwavering, totally there. Mm-hmm. And we're bringing those out in, and and accessing them in our adulthood. Yeah, and actually able to create, to continue to create, and live youthfully, and live um, spontaneously, and cu- with curiosity and playfulness from this from this space. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's crazy. I actually think about. Um, I was thinking about asking you this kind of question, like, where do you feel most at peace. Um, and what comes to my mind is actually flashback into South Haven, Michigan, which is where we go every summer with uh, my family and stuff and my cousins and all that. But part of our kind of tradition was we'd all go to the beach and essentially it's us playing in the sand, doing the stuff. But my favorite time was when we'd get there or whatever, and one day there'd be a storm happening because it meant the next day, um, there would be the riptide of the waves, <laughs> which is kind of dangerous, but my parents would be so freaked out about it that I always had to stay kind of shallow. But my favorite and most peaceful moment in memory is actually in just the raw going in, doing our big sand, like just trying to big a dig, dig a big hole, and then going into the, um, the lake. And while it's having the riptide, literally doing this like frog jump motion as the waves would like tumble you over and you'd get back up and it's just this feeling of being like a water swamp monster mm-hmm. in the riptide of the wave and it's strange because some people go to oh i like to you know sit by the river or the sunset um mm-hmm. but my mm-hmm. most peaceful is letter is playing around and pretending to be a swamp monster in a dangerous riptide but still close enough to shore that I'm kind of okay. <laughs> so I don't know why yeah, I yeah, so that as much as in, in, that's incredible my play and that's my piece. <laughs> incredible metaphor, right? It's just like, so you want to play in the jungle, in the, in the wilderness, in the, in the unknown, in the chaos, mm-hmm. but you just want to be, 
You want to be close enough to shore to feel safe. Yeah. Right. And I wonder for you, if your, if your growth is to continue to distance yourself from shore. Yeah. <laughs> right. Move, move further away and have the, the, the confidence in the deepest aspects of you mm. that you're going to be okay. Yeah. 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 And also to remain with the, uh, like you said, without the recklessness of just go jump off a cliff, you know, it's totally, still remain, totally. still remain like you, you're still in play mode. Like don't get into desperate swim mode, you know, be responsible. But um, yeah, that, that, but it begs the question though, right? Yeah. It begs the question about like, where is responsibility? Yeah. And like the, the cognitive self around risk and reward. Yeah. Where, where's, where's the, where's, where's the line like that? And we'll call that the edge, right? Yeah. The edge and teetering on that edge of like, I can, I can do this. Mm-hmm. I can go a little bit further. I can do a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I can, you know, I can continue to risk this and risk this mm-hmm. and discover what's, what's there. Yeah. I yeah, think yeah, this yeah. is the same space that most play when they're trying to get in shape or they're, trying to launch a career it's just like it's like man i i like i'm there but i'm not there i just don't ah uh, you yeah, know yeah. I don't, uh, this so, could go a multitude of ways and it's like whoa